Hello everyone and welcome to eighth week of our video tutorials and challenges. I have had a few requests from posts I put up last week asking for some feedback if the videos were healthy and I asked people for some suggestions of what they really would like me to work on to help you in lockdown and one thing that came up a few times was the fact that people have been struggling to get their dogs to cope with distances on blinds and how do I train for that. So I'm going to show you out in the field how I do it but what I want to do first of all is just talk to you a little bit about dummies and the different dummies that I use. So what I've got here on the table is a selection of different dummies that I would be using for different purposes. Um, to start off with all of my young dogs would be given a dummy similar to this which is uh, what I call a proper marking dummy so it's got blue and white contrast blue is one color they can see remember orange and red pigment tones they don't see that sort of turns into a gray for them if you like but this these colors are colors that they can see likewise the very bright yellow ball so young dogs in my kennel would start off as puppies with a very bright tennis ball because that's going to stand out as you can see really well on any background and that's what I really want them to do I want them to really lock on with their eyes which we're locking on same likewise with the blue and white dummy that's going to stand out really well the contrast also helps enormously when it's going through the air it's very easy to see it's very visual and then you've seen me use these a lot white target dummies this is a PVC one actually that is weighted to stand up and ideal for doing long range side distances I also use white bumper boy dummies not as bumper boys I don't use those any longer um, for launching dummies but I do use the the actual dummies themselves because they're really good at standing up they're a little bit heavier they're quite good at standing up but this is a dummy I've developed with my mentor Guy Bennett and he showed me a dummy several years ago that he made and this is what we call a distance target dummy so I've made this based on what Guy and I discussed as a, a opportunity to get dogs to really lock on to stare at this dummy from distance so they pick it up really easily it's extremely visual you'll see it's got white it's a bit dirty on the top it's got white uh, insulation electrical insulation tape down it and that helps give it a bit of shine in the sunshine um, there's other tape you can get that's even shinier than this which is brilliant because that's why I want it to stand out as a beacon and the reason that this has been developed not just because it's a great big white dummy this has actually got a magnet in the bottom so I have a stand that I put it on and I can actually put this in a field of sugar beet or a field of tall white grass and that will stand out this will actually stand out because I can have it raised above the ground so I haven't got this out today the stand because on a very windy day uh, the magnet isn't strong enough to hold the dummy onto the stand if I made the magnet too strong to stand up to really strong winds the dog won't get it off the stand so it's counterproductive so there's a limit to how much magnet force I want on this dummy but this is what we're going to use today and I'm going to show you on a track that I've got mown out into my field um, and I talked a little bit about tennis balls so these are great for short grass and I have start with a very bright clean nice new tennis ball for getting puppies to lock on so staring at the, dump, at the ball and then I graduate to something darker and less bright and then I've probably got another one somewhere that's really dull and that's what I want to use for hunting work so a hunting work I want the scent but I don't want the visual stimulus so I use something that's much more dull likewise I have these dummies that I've had made um, this one has got a white band of insulation tape so again I can stand this up and so it stands up as a beacon for a dog and it is again it's contrast this one is really good actually as standing out on a very bright background so you can see I've got it against the bright green grass this will stand out and we're going to use that a little bit later today as well okay so we've come out into my field and as you can see I've been a little bit busy with the bush lower mower sadly I don't have a ride on yet um, and we are in a 10 acre field so it's a very long track that I have mown but I use tracks as it's just basically just like a path for any human or any animal. We animals and humans love following paths. If you go in any wood, you'll see wildlife tracks, and they're literally like a footpath for animals. So animals get the concept of why not use a path? Because obviously, if there's been a lot of footfall along that path, it must mean it's safe. 
So with the same concept we can adapt for our training is I mow these tracks, you have a little look, and that one going this way, so I'm going my left and right. And when I mow these tracks, they need another cut today just to really make sure that they stand out. And it just really helps the dog. The other thing I've done, I've just come to set up my white target dummy, which is blown over in the wind. This dummy is actually very light weight because although it's very big, I don't want it to be very heavy for the dog to carry a long distance. So it's Wait for this wind. As you can see, that's going to stand out quite a beacon. But what I have done as well on the way up here is I've actually walked down the track. So my dogs have also now got my footsteps to follow. Dogs do follow footsteps. It's like another aid for them. If I didn't want them to use my footsteps, I would have done a big circle around. And so that I wasn't lending send, sorry, setting a scent trail. Okay, so we're out back at the other end of the field, and if I zoom in. You should just about see at the top there, there is our white target dummy which I've placed and I said I've walked up the track. One thing I forgot to mention was that you can use footpaths really easily or any path where there's a fence. If you want to teach your dog to run in a straight line, use a track, use a fence line, use a wall line, use an established footpath, but give them a target to run to. That's what keeps them straight. So Henry could easily jump all over this field but the idea is that he follows the footpath I have created by mowing a strip. Okay here we are out on a very windy day so hopefully you can hear this okay. Right I have put the dummy out as I've explained I have Henry here. What I would be doing in this situation when I'm teaching my young dog to cope with distances I wouldn't be firing my dog straight down at this distance first off if he hadn't done this exercise plenty of times so part of their training as a puppy and I'm going to cover that next week what we do a lot of is use tracks where we put a white target dummy down throw it down so it's visual on the track and we get the dog looking at it for several seconds and then turning away walking some distance turning back around waiting for the dog to re-establish that lock onto the dummy before I send the dog so I have got very little chance of the dog not picking it because what they're doing is I've trained them to look for the white dummy. So we've done that all through Henry's uh, puppyhood. Henry! And so he has done all of that training. So he knows to look for a white dummy. I wouldn't be coming out here fresh thinking, oh yes, he's going to see a white thing in the distance and run to it if he didn't understand that concept already. So we're going to cover that off next week. but. All you would do is basically start off, just as I said, is you throw it out as a white mark on a track so it stays very visual, don't want it going to tall grass, it stays very visual, you walk away and then you send it back as a memory blind. Henry! So you would send it, the dog back as a memory blind so the dog knows it's there and then when it turns around there's a very white nice target to look for and you just start to increase your distance. Then you can get to the stage where the dog doesn't see the dummy thrown out but automatically starts to look for something white to lock onto because he always knows if I look at the white dummy I will be sent for it. If I keep my eyes fixed on that white dummy I'll be sent for it. And that goes back to our very first challenge that we did, the focus challenge. So we're just going to test Henry out here. He's got an impatient, impatient little moment. We're going to test him on this white standing up dummy. challenge for this week. I've put a white dummy out and then I put a dark green one further back about sort of 10-15 yards further back at the top of the track. The white dummy has blown over of course in this high wind but he can still see it visually so I'm going to send him for the white one 
and then I want to send him back after that for the dark green one and just see if he trusts me to run on this track until he basically bumps into the dummy. So we're going to just, just test that out and see how he goes. He did everything I wanted him to do, went straight up there, picked the white one, and then was sent back for the dark green one. He had been up there to see them, so this was not nothing as a surprise, but what we'd gone from was a very strong visual target dummy to something he couldn't see, but he had seen it before. My progression then went on to a blind would be that he hadn't seen the dummy at all put out there um, after the white target dummy, so it would be a complete blind, just to see if he would trust me to send him back up there and he'd think yes on the back on the end of that hand on that line I will bump into something so I'm going to trust him to try it so that's your homework that's your challenge so set up yourself up a nice strong target your dog get your dog used to doing that regularly 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 I don't expect you to be doing this in a week if you've never done it before you might want to start off with like I said just putting marks out that are white on a visual track make sure the visual walking away sending your dog back foot and progressingly getting further away from it but waiting for the dog to lock on is fundamental so you saw hopefully in my video that every time I was sending him before I sent him before I lined up I was waiting for him to see if he was looking at that white target and praising him because that's the, that's it done then dog knows what it's doing it's easy so good luck with that and post your video as usual on the comment section on the post. Thanks very much.